Hey, what's up everybody? This is Joshua with Integrated Strength, I'm making this video real quick to talk about something specifically related to the shoulder. And I think where a lot of us kind of miss the boat when it comes to addressing shoulder impingement or issues on the front side of that shoulder. So I had a client come in today who was having some pinchy issues on the front of her shoulder when we were trying to do some shoulder flexion based exercises to just open up her range of motion a little bit, just some activation drills, but it was enough to elicit some symptoms here. So the first thing that we took a look at was just her bicep tendon and her rotator cuff. Those are two common areas that, and things that you wanna make sure are functioning well and are aligned properly before you start to go deeper down the rabbit hole with the shoulder stuff. So we ended up looking at her bicep tendon and it actually was indeed not where it's supposed to be. This is kind of an aside from what we're talking about here, but the bicep tendon, for what it's worth, the long head of the bicep tendon runs up through the uh, humerus here and it sits in a little bit of a groove in your humerus bone. And sometimes that tendon gets pulled immediately because there's more muscles typically that are pulling stuff this way. So a quick easy reset is to simply start with your arm externally rotated, take your arm and put a little bit of pressure onto the anterior capsule. You can almost maybe even feel a little bit potentially where that bicep tendon kind of tends to sit. So you're pushing the tissue this way, arm here, and then you're just approximating the two together. So you're bringing the groove and the humerus bone towards the tendon, and you're pushing the tendon towards the groove. So if the tendon is out, displaced medially, this should help kind of gently move it back to where it wants to be. And oftentimes that will help with some pinchy stuff and some issues in the shoulder, or if you're getting some pain down the arm, even into the bicep. So that's number one. Me and my client did that, we both did that, and then cleared her rotator cuff just to make sure all of her rotator cuff muscles were working properly, and they were. We rechecked the exercise that we were doing that was causing pinching, and while it improved a little bit, and it took the edge off some, we were still getting some of that pinchy sensation. So the next thing that I went to to check, just using my theoretical understanding of biomechanics, was to take a look at just how her scapula was actually articulating on her ribs, and how the muscles that participate in scapular control were working. So the first one we looked at was her upper trap. And this is where the, the crux of this video is understanding the upper trap and how to work with it. So I checked her upper trap and I think, well, first I'll say, I think a lot of us, the upper trapezius has been vilified a lot within social media and this training circles and rehab circles because it's a really commonly tight muscle for a lot of people. And we just kind of by default think unfortunately that in something's tight that it needs to be released or stretched and sometimes it is the case and sometimes those interventions can be helpful but it's very often the case especially with the upper trap given the nature of that muscle that releasing it and stretching it isn't going to help and sometimes can make it worse and in this case when we checked my client's upper trap her upper trap was actually totally shut off and not participating in the movement at all so instead of releasing it or stretching it which would have just made it worse and destabilized it more we did some different interventions and I'm not going to get into the details because that's kind of the body work stuff that I do, but we did some interventions to get her upper trap back online, working and participating again in movement. And sure enough, when we rechecked that exercise, pinching totally gone. And so I want to share this because I think it's important to understand and remember that when something's tight, it doesn't necessarily need to be stretched, right? A headache is not an aspirin deficiency. There's a reason why a muscle is shut down or weak or tight or not able to participate in a movement or a joint involved in a movement is getting pissy because maybe some of the muscles in that movement are not working well and integrating well. And so we want to make sure that we don't just release haphazardly. We have a better understanding of why something is behaving the way it is in the body. And in this case, getting the upper trap to actually work more and participate more in the movement was the actual thing that fixed the issue. And so, when it comes to the upper trap, I encourage all of you to restrain or, or don't be so quick to just dive in and start digging in really hard or stretching your neck and cranking on it aggressively. I would actually focus on trying to do something that's going to get the upper trapezius muscle to actually work more. First, maybe in isolation, but then doing some stuff where you're getting it to participate in overhead motion type of activities. And you're probably gonna have more success with that. So hopefully that was helpful. If you like these kind of videos, I'm more than happy to do more of these going forward. Um, there's a million and one topics I can do these types of videos on. I'm just kind of doing them off the cuff, off the top of my head based on just clinical stuff showing up. So um, if you have any other questions like this, talking about any sort of specific topics with shoulder, neck, whatever, let me know. Happy to answer your questions.